Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Here to describe the difference between a transmission line or feed line and an antenna. I received an email from a viewer who says that he cannot understand what makes a transmission line different from an antenna. Well, the most important distinction that I can think of is that the transmission line or feed line does not radiate signal while the antenna is designed for that very purpose. Now what I'm showing here is a half wave dipole fed with what looks like open wire transmission line. And of course this goes to your radio or transmatch as the case may be. Uh, it could be open wire line, it could be coaxial line, it's a generic feed line. Ideally the angle between the antenna and the transmission line should be 90 degrees for at least a quarter of a wavelength of transmission line away from the antenna and preferably a half a wavelength or more. But the transmission line in, under ideal circumstances does not radiate whereas the antenna does. The other question or the other part of the question involved current loops and nodes. Does a transmission line have current loops and nodes? And the answer is usually yes it does if the characteristic impedance of the transmission line is not identical with the purely resistive impedance of the dipole. Now a half wave dipole by its very nature if you string it up away from obstructions in free space has a characteristic impedance or Z sub zero of a pretty close to 73 ohms. Now if you can get a hold of a 73 ohm transmission line um, you can't that I'm aware of but you can get a hold of a 75 ohm transmission line it's the TV line called RG 59 U U well you know pharmacists would just absolutely love me U stands for unbalanced I believe that is a coaxial cable that is commonly used in television and internet connections it has a characteristic impedance of usually 75 ohms which is so close to 73 ohms that it's just about a perfect match a half wavelength dipole has a purely resistive impedance of 73 ohms that means no reactance whereas this has a characteristic impedance of 75 ohms. So what does that mean? It means that the ratio of the RF voltage E to the RF current I always equals 75. So if you have for example E equals 75 volts and I equals 1 amp. Now these are RF currents and you're using a 
75 ohm line with a 73 ohm uh, antenna, you're going to have this same 75 volts and 1 amp all along the length of the entire line. So there will be no loops nor nodes in a, in a perfectly matched transmission line. Usually there are. Generally, with a properly designed antenna transmission line system, it shouldn't matter whether there are loops or nodes or not. The transmission line should never radiate. But the characteristic impedance Z sub zero is equal to the 75 volts to 1 amp ratio in this case. Well, what's, how much power do you suppose this transmitter is producing then? Well, you just multiply them. Power, of course, in the simple case, without any reactants in a system, is the RF voltage multiplied by the RF current, in this case, 75 watts. But that's a lot more difficult to determine when there are loops and nodes. And there usually are because the characteristic impedance of the transmission line does not match the resistive, purely resistive half-wave dipole impedance. For example, if this is 300 or 450 ohm ladder line, you will not have a perfect match. You will have loops and nodes. But the line should still not radiate because the currents in one side of the line always oppose the currents in the other side. They're out of phase. And because they're so closely spaced together compared to a free space wavelength, at any distance more than just a couple of feet, away from this transmission line, you will see that it does not radiate because the radiation from one half of the line cancels out the radiation from the other half. That's in an open wire line. In a coaxial line, the situation is a little more simple. The shield of the coax, that's this this is a cross-sectional diagram of coax. Center conductor right there in the middle and the braid or shield around it. The shield, which is normally grounded for radio frequency, simply keeps all of the uh, RF inside the line and during transmission and keeps any stray RF out when you're receiving. So a transmission line is specifically designed to get a signal to an antenna or to get an antenna or a, a signal from an antenna to your receiver without picking up or radiating anything. It's like a pipeline that does not leak. And that's really the best answer I can give you. A transmission line is intended to transfer, in a sense, power. I would say uh, an electromagnetic field is a better word for it in this case, but to transfer the electromagnetic field from the transmitter to the antenna without itself radiating. But the antenna, of course, is designed exactly for that purpose. And during reception, as your antenna picks the signal up, the transmission line transfers the resulting very weak electromagnetic field to your radio without picking up any extraneous signals. There are situations, however, where the transmission line length makes a difference. It normally shouldn't, but it will cause problems if the transmission line happens to be resonant at the operating frequency, that is to say an integral multiple or a whole multiple, a number multiple of 
one quarter of a wavelength. N, it's supposed to be parentheses there, N being a whole number. But in the worst case, uh, it's a half a wavelength times N. I get, yes, th this, is, this should be a lambda signal wavelength. So, that's it. The big difference between a transmission line is, and an antenna is that a transmission line ideally will not radiate nor pick up any signal, but an antenna normally will do that with perfection. Stan Jabalisco signing off saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which means, of course, da-da-da-da-da-da. -da 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 -da.